Hello Internet! Today we're going to be making the beginnings of a side-scrolling shooter. Uh, this is just sort of a project that I kind of want to try out. Uh, I don't really know where it's going to go, but I kind of want to use it as a, an excuse to kind of play with things like high scores and things like that. So that's sort of where this is going. Uh, we might take it further if it turns into something cool, or we might just build like the scaffolding for a game, and then you guys can take that where you need to. Uh, so. I have a brand new Unity project, we're using Unity 2018 for this, uh, just because why not? Uh, and this video is actually in 4K, uh, I said that in the last video, that is probably going to get posted at the exact same time as this, so that matters less, but uh, I totally screwed that up, <laughs> and it wasn't. Uh, so this one, this one should be, I've, I've triple checked everything, and if it isn't, then yell at me in the comments, for, for real yell at me in the comments. Uh, so, anyway, <laughs> well, the general idea for this video is going to be we want a controller that can either go up or down, and that's it. And there's going to be a limit to that, so it can, either, it can go to a specific height or up and down, and that's it. Uh, so it should be easy, unless I've completely overlooked something, and then it will be hard. But that's just generally how this works. Uh, so we're going to create a cube and we're going to call it our ship. Uh, not our ship, our ship. There we go. All right. Let's go into this flyer folder, create a new scripts thing. Uh, you might see Stream Saver is there. That's a project that I kind of started a while back and then really didn't like where the direction of the game we were building. We might make this, that's sort of the long-term vision. I think this will work for that, but we're going to get there. Uh, so that folder is just kind of there as a placeholder to kind of remind me of that. No other other reasons. Uh, so we've got our ship. Two things we want. A ship input controller, which is going to actually take the input and then either move it up or down. A ship input which is just going to hold the inputs from the ship input controller and then a ship motion controller i don't really know if these are the good names or not but that's sort of the the vision i have motion controller like that name less uh but the general idea of these three components is they're like the core of everything so ship input controller is going to tie in to whatever the input device is. In this specific case, we probably don't actually want a ship input controller. We want a ship keyboard input controller or a ship uh, control joystick input controller, things like that. And so you can kind of modify things that way. The ship input is probably the easiest, so we'll start there. That's literally just going to hold what the actual inputs are. So should you be shooting? Should you be using a special attack? Uh, should you be going up or down or whatever? That That's literally it. Uh, and it doesn't actually control any of that. It's literally just going to sort values that should be used by the motion controller to actually do that. And then the motion controller is the third thing. Uh, and so that is going to actually take those inputs from the ship input and actually do something with them. So either move the ship up or move it down and then kind of clamp that Y value so it doesn't go too high or too low. That's sort of what I'm thinking of. So think of ship input as sort of like the transportation between the two. It's what's being used to communicate between the controller and the actual controls. So ship input, the easy one, will have just a public float a uh, vertical, I don't know about the name, but we'll leave it there for now. That's it. That, that's literally this class done. Checked off, we're good. <laughs> Great. Why is this here? That can go away. <laughs> All right. So the ship input controller is the next bit. That's also fairly easy. All three of these should be easy. That's sort of why we're doing it this way. Uh, if we do it correctly, it's going to mean that we can swap in new ways of input or new ways of controlling things without having to worry about the other one. So as long as this ship input doesn't change, we can swap out one or the other side of it 
without changing the other side. If that makes any sense. That did not open the input controller. There we go. Private ship input. Uh, input cool. In our start, we're actually going to grab that reference. So git component of our ship input. This means that they have to be on the same component. So we're actually going to require a component here. So require component means that the component that we give it, the type, has to exist on the same uh, same game object. If it doesn't, Unity automatically will create it for you. It's sort of a, a safety measure, so you have less chance of getting nulls just because you added something. So theoretically, that require component will mean that this will almost always be correct unless we do something in scripts, so it won't solve scripts. So cool. And then the fun part, input, that's not right, input.vertical equals input dot get axis vertical and so that should just pull in the vertical axis so up and down uh, just default unity inputs for now so that should work and then the final bit is going to be the ship motion controller which we should be able to finish up pretty quickly and it's going to be fairly similar uh, so ship input input start input get component of the ship input and so we're pretty much at the same spot we were with the input controller except instead of modifying things what I'm going to do is actually grab the vertical out of it and actually use that to modify things so this transform dot position uh, plus equals our input dot vertical <clears throat> times the time delta and that should be it. Let's add a speed as well, just so we can actually modify things. So speed, public float speed. And so that's going to change how fast we actually go up and down. Why didn't that? Oh, duh. We're, we don't have a direction yet. Uh, so that's not changing correctly. This is a float. The right side's a float. Left side is a vector. So let's add a vector three dot up. And that's going to move it now on the up axis if vertical is positive and down if it's not. And that should more or less handle everything. It doesn't clamp it, but clamping it should be fairly straightforward. Uh, I'm saying should a lot here because it should is probably the best way to put that. So vertical can stay there. Speed can be one. And so if I start this now, we should see the cube goes up when I hold up and back down when I hold down. And that that's that's it. That's generally what we want. Uh, and if I increase the speed, it should go a little bit faster. But we have ship motion controls. And then we can really just move this over to the left side of the screen like this, just by changing this because yeah. And then we can move up and down and do all that other fun stuff. So the motion is more or less done. The problem is I can hold up and we'll just go off into infinity, which isn't great. <laughs> so what we want to do is clamp this. I want to take this position and set it to a max value. So we need a public float max height. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do this actually. We don't need to do it this way. We could actually have like colliders above it and below it, and then use those colliders as a way of like making bounds. And the cool thing with that is we could actually change it over time. Uh, so certain sections could be thinner and certain sections could be wider. We're not gonna worry about that here because that's just one more work and two, uh, I don't have a use for that. So it doesn't seem worth it. Uh, so let's create a max height and a min height. And these are actually going to be separate. There's a reason I'm doing them separately. This way we can have a uh, min height could be like zero and max height could be five instead of having them both just be the opposite and zero being the center of the screen. That may not always be what we want. 
So we're going to go this way. And if we ever want to have like a, a changing height of something, this will actually give us a way to do that without too much extra work. So now that we have this, we need to actually clamp it. So we are going to add a plus here and set the new position. Uh, position, there we go, equal to, to this nasty thing. <laughs> and we'll just throw that in parentheses so that it makes a little bit more sense. And so we're doing the same thing as we were previously. We're just storing it in a temporary variable. The advantage of this is now I can do if position.y is greater than the max height, then position.y equals the max height. And that works. We can actually shorten this though. Instead of doing uh, these ifs, we can do a uh, position.y equals uh, mathf.clamp of position.y. And then this is going to take the min and the max. So if we do a min height and a max height, it's going to clamp between those two values. So if it goes below min height, it's actually just going to set it to min height. If it goes above max height, it's going to set it to max height. And so that sort of just clamps it into that in-between area. And hopefully we, we don't need anything else. It kind of shortens our code and clamp is a fairly descriptive term. So I think this just makes more sense. And then finally, we have to actually set this back to the transform. So transform.position equals our position. And now if I set the max and min heights, this should get clamped. And that, that should be it, right? So once this finishes compiling, we should be able to try that out. Set this to like three and minus three. So they're the same above and below. So if I just hold up on this ship, it should end up at three and then stop like that. Uh, and then if I increase the speed, because that was painfully slow, and then go down, we'll hit minus three and stop again. So we've now clamped our, our player effectively to this. Uh, and that becomes a lot easier if we use like an orthographic projection, so we don't get the perspective anymore, and then set it to like four, because that way uh, minus four is actually the bottom here. And that, that just makes it a little bit easier. We can actually measure that instead of kind of guessing with a perspective. So yeah, I think that's it. Uh, it's really simple. It's not, it's not designed to be hard or anything. And I think that's probably for the best. But it gives us a way to control a ship uh, with two basic inputs, which if we ever actually do bring this as like a mixer game, I think <laughs> the less inputs, the better. So. This seems to make sense to me. Uh, if you guys have feedback or things that you want to suggest for this project, I'm going to try to get this out as like bare bones. Uh, so it might even just ship with like these boxes and then we can add art later. So if you guys have ideas on how we could change this or things that you think we should add or uh, just topics that kind of fit into this whole genre let me know <laughs> and we can we can give it give them a look but that's it for this video hopefully i didn't screw anything up hopefully 4k actually worked uh, that would be embarrassing if it didn't uh but yeah that's it for this video so uh, yeah hopefully there's more videos soon uh I, I am sorry for missing like a week and a half i was kind of sick so it happens uh but we're back now and hopefully actually getting things done. So yeah, anyway, <laughs> until next time, see internet.